Last lesson was Lesson 3, Light Duty. And we looked at what a duty cycle was and how to vary the brightness or intensity of an LED. Now we use these four tools, a counter, a compare, and two output tools. But in fact, we can replace all of those tools with a single tool called the motor tool. And you might be thinking, well, how does a motor tool do that? Well, they work on very similar principles. A motor tool drives a motor in the same way that a duty cycle can drive an LED. It varies the intensity by short bursts of power. And we call that pulse width modulation because we change the width of the pulse. So this is lesson four, trance. We're going to create more than just what we've done. We're going to make the pulse of light vary brightness like a trance effect. And we're going to use the motor tool and we're going to use a file tool just to set up our motor tool before we get going. So our motor tool has its own counter file. And if we have a look at if we have a look at the bottom, it's added in an allocated register down here. Motor tools use a register to store memory, like we use the count register. So that's all we need to do to drive our LED the same way. And we're going to go into the motor tool and we're going to set the speed uh, file from, instead of count, we're going to call it duty. And we're going to use a different LED for a change. We'll change it to G5, which was our green LED. And we'll click OK. Now we need to set up our file tool. And we're going to, at the moment, send a value, so a literal value, to our duty. And we'll change this to 5. We might also go back to the main and we'll give it a name, duty. Press enter. Our values for duty are going to be between 0 and 255. And the reason for that is that the number 0 to 255 is the maximum amount of numbers we can have in a file register, an 8-bit file register. So this motor tool gives us a little bit more resolution instead of counting from 1 to 100. It's got two and a half times that, so we've got more values that we can use. Well, let's program that and see what it does. Now, it has turned on our green LED just dimly. Our blue LED is still on. So we actually need to go and configure that blue LED. And we'll do that with an output tool. In the output tool, we need to make sure that all of the pins are low. And we can annotate this all off. Program that. Okay, so now we have our green LED controlled by our motor tool. And if we change that value in the literal up to 255, we should expect to see the brightest LED that we can get. That's pretty bright. And the most dim LED, well, would be all off, is zero. So we can do that and it turns the LED off. And you can go anywhere in between. Halfway is about 127. Well, we're not finished there, that's just the start. Let's uh, name our motor tool and we'll call it green. Now to vary the duty, we're going to have to have another counter and we're going to make it count between 0 and 255. 
We'll call it duty this time. Initial value can be zero, increment by one, maximum 255, resets at zero, and we're using the duty file. So instead of using our file tool, we can put in our counter. And I forgot it's zero to 255. So before we program, let's move our link line from the motor back to the counter. So now it's going to count zero to 255 every time it goes through the motor tool. And we'll program that. Now it's probably not quite as you'd expect. It's not pulsing, it's not changing brightness. And that's because it's all a bit of a blur. Uh, we can't see how fast this is changing, so it doesn't look like it is changing. All of those voltages, those spikes, those short bursts of pulse are all merging together and becoming one. So we need to slow things down and we can't do it with a delay. This time we actually have to do it with a cycle tool. So the cycle tool is going to divide things. So it's going to give us a bit of a ratio. So we'll make it, uh, we'll make it about a thousand cycles. And so for every thousand cycles, it's going to go out the true connector once. Well, let's hit the invert button to swap those. So we've got true on the bottom and false on the top. And we'll annotate it to 1000. Okay, false will go back to the motor. So it's going to do the motor 1000 times. Then it's going to come out and it's going to change the duty by one. And it's going to go back and do a thousand of those motor tools. Let's program it and see what we have. Okay, we can see it getting brighter and it goes dull for a very short time. It's definitely changing brightness. Well, if we make those cycles shorter, we should see a bit of a pulsing effect. And let's go down to 200, change the annotation. There we go, it's giving us a bit of a pulse. That's also similar to how a slow start dimming light works when you turn on a light switch and it dims or, or intensifies an LED as it turns it off. Or a dimmer when you switch off a light if it's got a slow turn off. And then like in your car, when you shut the car door, it doesn't always go off straight away. Waits for a time and then it gets slightly more dull and dull again. It's using that sort of technology behind it. Well, let's neaten things up. We'll put all of these in a line. Select them. Horizontal alignment and distribution. There we have it. That's lesson four, trance. Make sure you print your work, show it to your teacher, get it assessed, and we'll see you next lesson.